So in this video, I want to take you through the idea of individuation as it relates to the anxious preoccupied attachment style. And what this really means is learning to derive your sense of self from the inside out rather than the outside in, which will then promote a much greater sense of personal safety, the ability to self-soothe, the end of rumination about what people think of you in your outside world and hyper-focusing on that because you won't be deriving your sense of self more exclusively on that. And this is one of the most massive and major parts of becoming securely attached as an anxious preoccupied, especially as it relates to ending cycles of people-pleasing, knowing what you want, stopping settling for less than you deserve. Like this is such a powerful topic to dig into. This is about the concept or idea of individuation, of actually really behaviorally developing and identifying a strong sense of self, not from the outside in, but from the inside out. And this is vital if we want to feel confident in our dating decisions, in having boundaries and having standards for ourselves. This is absolutely a necessity if we want to have a strong sense of self-confidence, personal self-empowerment, if we want to get out of these cycles of rumination, of worrying so much about what other people think, of fearing rejection so much, if we want to escape from all of those things individuation and learning to properly individuate and understanding what that means, which I'll explain all of to you in this video, is one of the essentially prerequisites. It's like one of the necessities to get there and to shed some of these really painful experiences of, of what life can feel like, especially from an attachment perspective, if we don't have the ability to properly individuate. So Individuation essentially means, and it's a behavioral stage of development, it essentially means learning to develop a healthy sense of self. And a healthy sense of self cannot ever be identified or derived from the outside in. Okay, so if you are deriving your sense of self based in what other people think of you, what their opinions are of you, what they think you should do about pivotal choices in your life, for example, your parents tell you you should be in X, Y, Z career. And maybe you really want to be in this career over here, but you're like, you know what? They think I should do this, right? So you go in that direction. You're deriving your sense of choices about a pivotal area of your life based on what people think around you that you should do, especially people who you may look up to or put on a pedestal, somebody who represents sort of some sort of authority in your life. Now, um, if you learn to derive your sense of self from the outside in like that, if you're making choices in all seven areas of your life, whether it's to do with your physical health, whether it's to do with your career, whether it's to do the, with the decisions you make in the financial or money area of life, whether it's your thoughts, opinions, views about things, whether it is the way that you regulate your emotions and what you should feel about different situations or experiences, whether it's about the types of relationships you're in and the types of people that you're with, if you are deriving your sense of decision-making process from the outside world and the people around you's point of view, parents, friends, family, especially this tends to relate to authority figures. So people we put on a pedestal can even be like, if you're dating somebody in a relationship and you just put them on this huge pedestal because you think they're so smart or so amazing. And so you allow them to, to always have the right decision for you. Anybody that you've made the authority in your life if you are, and here's the really clear difference, there's a difference between taking on an opinion from somebody else, okay? So somebody you're dating says, you should be in this career and you don't care about that career. You're not interested. In fact, every fiber of your being is disinterested in that career, but you're like, oh, they're really smart and they know me well, so I'm gonna go back to school for that thing. If you're doing this, okay, you probably haven't had enough of an experience of individuation yet. And what is inevitably going to happen is that you are going to find yourself um, in situations you don't like, um, in situations where you later might find, unfortunately, that you have some kind of regret around because you're going, wait, like I should have thought that through more, or I should have done my own research about this, or I should have looked into what felt right for me. And this is where there's a really pivotal and important difference in our lives between, um, you know, accepting an opinion from somebody around us versus forming our own opinion. Now, let me be clear. You don't have time as a human being to form an opinion about everything. You can't form an opinion about, you know, which mountain is the, the most fun to hike if you can't go hike all these different mountains, right? Or climb all these different mountains. 
you may not have time to do those things, but when it comes to important decisions that affect you directly as a human being, in other words, career, financial, mental, emotional, spiritual, physical, and relationships. So these really pivotal, you know, seven areas of life. If we don't take the time about the most crucial decisions that we can make in each of those areas to form our own opinions, rather than just accept the opinion, the opinions of the outside world, then what we're essentially continuously trying to do is to derive our sense of safety from the outside world and from other people's experiences and opinions. Now you can clearly see, hopefully from this discussion so far, why that could never possibly be of the highest standard for you, right? Like what works in somebody for their career may have nothing to do with what would work for somebody else because we each have different unique programming, right? We have our individual beliefs and opinions and needs and ideas and programs that will either light us up in a specific area of career or make us feel really down and unfulfilled. And that same idea applies to the financial area of our lives. For one person, money may equal freedom and pleasure. For another person, money may equal safety and security. And, and so, you know, what somebody does with their money might be different from what somebody else wants to do in their lifetime with their money. And as you go through these major seven areas of life, career, financial, mental, is like our thoughts, opinions, ideas. Um, if you're deriving your sense of like views on life from from just your parents and you never question them, that's going to be problematic. If you are deriving your way of emotionally regulating yourself and making your own physical health decisions, because health can never just be a one size fits all experience. Um, similar to like our mindset programming, we just have such unique individual situations there. And through relationships, what we want, what our standards are, what our non-negotiables are, what our needs are, like all of those different things are unique to us. And part of healing and becoming securely attached means ending this idea or concept of trying to derive what the right versus wrong thing is by looking at collective opinions and ideas. We can tap in there. We can listen to what's going on out there. We can take those things into consideration, but we also have to be making decisions from a place where we are able to also consider ourselves and what our unique needs are, what our unique perspective and feelings are or boundaries are or requirements are or desires are in each of those major areas of life. Now, if we don't have a strong relationship to ourselves and if we are constantly deriving what we should be doing from the external world, from the collective, and in, in essence, deriving our sense of security and stability from the collective, from our external world, that will always lead to us feeling insecure and unsafe. Why? Because the outside world is forever changing. The only greater space you have while our inner world is changing, it's not changing as rapidly and as as quickly and there aren't so many conflicting and ideas and opinions and points of view in the outside world as there is from our inside world. And if we don't have the capacity to learn to navigate our inside world by taking ourselves into consideration and introspecting there and developing our own inner sense of compass and morals and understanding about what we need and what's important to us in those seven areas of life, then what inevitably happens is we keep trying to derive our sense of self and self-identity from the outside. And this is where you will experience that people's opinions of you just have such a capacity to harm you or affect you rather than you feeling kind of like, oh, I don't really care too much what people think. Like I'll consider people's criticisms or like pay attention or see if there's something I can learn from them, but they're not like landing on you. Like they're like, you know, just cutting you deeply, right? There, that, that won't happen if you're individuated more. Um, we won't be in a space where we constantly ruminate and worry about what everybody else thought around us. We will be in a place where we have a healthy sense of stability and security in our lives as a baseline that is untouchable and unshakable by the outside world because we're not getting it from there. And we will have less of a fear of rejection. We'll have clear ideas for what we want in different areas of our lives. We won't settle for a career that gives us less than we deserve. We won't settle for a situation where we're in a relationship with somebody that doesn't actually fulfill us or meet our needs. So individuating is one of the most important parts of healing. And it really involves our ability to critically think by considering ourselves and learning who we are and what matters to us, and then making decisions that way from the inside out. And often people come into individuation through 
basically being broken down enough that they buy the outside world, that they stop looking to it to derive their sense of security from that space. But when we don't do that, and or if we keep going back there anyways, we, we keep going to the outside world and their opinions um, without doing our own individual research about how that opinion applies to us in a unique way. When we don't do that, we will inevitably feel like we get let down or there's just this lack of stability or things are always changing. We'll have just more insecurity and challenges in that area of our lives. Now, how this particularly applies, and I want to just say one other thing about this, okay? So maybe this will just be like a more general video here and I'll do a part two, but one, a couple other things about this. Um, you know, when you try to derive your sense of stability from the outside world in, it makes you easy to manipulate. And I don't mean that in like a disrespectful way to anybody. It's just like, if you are always looking to other people for your opinions, you're more likely to end up in relationships that gaslight you in situations where you are being manipulated by a partner perhaps or somebody. And it's easy to fall into like harmful group think patterns that can be costly both to yourself and to other people. And I want to be really clear here too. Like you can be a really good person and, and still be individuated. Like being a good person and being an obedient person are two different things. And I really believe that we should never teach children, for example, to be obedient. I know that that's the punishment reward system that people get raised in, but you know, obedience, like if we look right and we're just being really honest if we take a look at history and some of the most harmful events that ever happened in history a good person um can or like let's say an obedient person um can end up in a harmful collective group think pattern and and that obedient person may do horrible awful things in the name of obedience like if we look at history we have examples of that where people were being obedient instead of questioning different narratives and different things that were happening so they went with this sort of group think dynamic and that could have actually caused a lot of harm now this is not me saying that we shouldn't have rules and that rules don't have a place in society because of course we should but we should also be mindful um, that when we do anything or make any big decision in our lives, that we are deriving our sense of choice from the inside out. And unfortunately, the people who end up the most in painful, abusive, gaslighting relationships tend to be people who didn't learn to individuate first. And it's of no fault to them. It's usually a reflection of past trauma in their lives and in their experiences. But um, you know, it's a harmful thing to have to go through that you, that you keep ending up in painful relationship after painful relationship. And again, there are versions of that in all of seven areas of life. So as this all relates to anxious, preoccupied attachment styles, some of the biggest places that you want to check in with first are where am I struggling in the seven areas of life to individuate? And we know that because anxious, preoccupied attachment styles more than pretty much any other attachment style put so much emphasis on deriving their sense of self from their external relationships, they usually have very minimal standards in external relationships. And I don't mean this in like a negative way, it, like to judge or anything like that, but just like, it's something so powerful to recognize that you can change it, which is that sometimes you've just put up with so much more than you ever should as an anxious preoccupied. And you don't allow yourself to have empowered standards where you've like considered yourself and what you're looking for and what you need. And you're holding out for that. And you're vetting people effectively based on that. And sometimes because you'll, you'll put that or that part of yourself last, like what you're really looking for, what you're really needing, and instead favor like people pleasing to win them over, to then identify your sense of self and security from your connections to other people, rather than from your intrinsic self and knowing who you are in each of those seven areas and having, you know, ways of living and showing up in your life to support that then it can make you feel like more let down in relationships, more frustrated, more anxious. And it usually becomes this vicious cycle of like, you haven't fully individuated. Then you rely too much on the outside world. The outside world will just let you down because it will be forever changing and won't always meet our expectations, especially if you don't know what your needs are and you're not communicating them. And especially if you don't know what your standards are and you're not carving out space to make sure that who you bring into your life matches those standards. And so then it just becomes, then you feel more anxious and then you rely more and it just goes around and around and it, it feels very painful to go through that as an individual. Um, and then often you'll feel like afraid to set boundaries or afraid of speaking up or sharing your truth or making decisions from the inside out in case those decisions disappoint other people or let other people down or get you abandoned or make you seem like you're a burden. But 
you know, in actually making those choices incrementally, slowly, but surely over time, the exact opposite will happen to you in your life. So rather than being in a position where like, let's say for example, you denied yourself that temporary short-term gratification of people pleasing somebody on a date who you weren't even that interested in, but then you end up kind of forming an attachment and connection and you keep going on dates and suddenly you're like attached to somebody and romantically invested in somebody who is really not what you were looking for and is really not showing up for anything that you're wanting in your life while denying yourself that short-term gratification of that connection and, and closeness to somebody because you know they're not the right fit for you and holding out and continuously living and orchestrating your life from the inside out until that right person comes along, it breaks that vicious cycle of feeling like abandoned and then trying to rely more on the outside world and then feeling like people let you down further and then feeling more abandoned and that going around and around. And instead you break out of that cycle, you're feeling more self-confident self empowered you don't settle for less than you deserve and then when you do attach to somebody it actually feels like it's so much more worthwhile and you feel more connected so you want to start by looking like at the different seven areas of life where have you not individuated where have you not really done your own research considered yourself learn what you want to be doing and how you want to be showing up and who you are and what fills your cup in each of those seven areas of life and then as you dive into that and, and more deeply understand that also being able to go, okay, you know what, I'm going to show up for habits and patterns to support that higher expression of myself. And then over time, I'm going to uphold the boundaries around those areas to protect that. And that's work, right? Don't get me wrong. That's work. And sometimes anxious preoccupied will be like, oh no, you know, what if I lose people in the process? Or what if somebody feels like I'm too strong with my boundaries? You know, ultimately do these things incrementally, slowly, but surely. And instead of focusing on the fears. It's like this idea that the mind can always look at what it can lose, but you, it's immeasurable to really understand what you can gain on the other side. And not only are you so much more likely to become securely attached faster, but on top of that, you're so much more likely to feel fulfilled when you do attach to people, when you do commit to certain things in your life that are worth your while. So um, try to look at where are you not individuating, do some research to figure out, sometimes we don't know, right? Sometimes we can't be like, oh, I'm this way in this area of life, or this is how I want to operate with my finances, or this is how I want to operate with my health. Sometimes we have to research first and take that time to really form our own opinions. And then um, from that perspective, going forward, you want to be able to say, okay, and what am I afraid will happen if I do? And you want to reprogram those fears. You want to get rid of those limiting beliefs. Oh, I'll be abandoned by everybody if I individuate. The opposite happens. I'm telling you right now, you'll become more secure. Securely attached relationships are more likely to last. They're less codependent. They're much healthier. Like everything that you think will go wrong will probably be almost exactly the opposite. But you have to arrive at that conclusion by doing belief reprogramming. By the way, if you want to do a deep dive into this topic, we have a whole course on this. It's called Strengthening Self-Identity. And it is all about this with exercises, workbook, everything to like outline the steps so that you can arrive there. And it just helps save a whole bunch of time in this process um, rather than trying to figure that out yourself. And you can um, gain access to it for free for seven days using the link down below. Um, so it will just help you speed up that process and feel like you've got that extra support and kind of hand holding throughout that. Also, that link gives you access to four live webinars with me every single week. If you want to join in there with me and ask me questions or anything like that, I'll be there to support you. Um, and so at the end of this, you really want to see like, you know, where are the places that I want to choose to outsource certain things and certain decisions and where are the places that I really don't want to be operating that way? Because these areas of my life are too important to me. And that's where you want to be taking those action steps to get there. And um, I just want you to take a look at like, where am I struggling to individuate? Which areas of life? What are the fears I have around individuating? Sometimes it's that we just don't know enough yet about that area. So we have to research a little bit. We have to do our due diligence to figure out who we are in that area of life. But the more that we do, the more we will feel like we have a strong sense of self. It's developed from the inside out. We've got a healthy relationship to that area of our lives. We're not people pleasing as much. We're not gaslighting ourselves. We're not breaking our own trust. We feel empowered setting boundaries. We're not afraid of rejection. Like so many great things come of this. So that's it for today. <laughs> I hope this made sense. Um, thank you so much for watching and for being here. Please like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one.